We're so excited that you're here and want to say a warm welcome from wherever you are tuning in today. And at C3, we're all about creating new ways to connect and belong. So why don't you drop a line in the chat, say hello and find community. We hope you enjoy today's service. Cool, everybody, this is Beth. Say hi, Beth. Very good. Beth's had a really, uh, so last week we started a series on basically um, connecting with people outside our church. So we want everyone in our region to know Christ, their eternity, many ways represented by Pastor Walter, their eternity uh, is at stake. And therefore, again, the only way that their eternity is going to be rescued to Christ, to heaven, um, is that, that we go and we share the good news. And so we're looking at strategies about how we can do that. And therefore, again, the work of the Holy Spirit in working with us in that. And so that's just going to share a little story of something that happened for her through this week after last Sunday. Yeah. I'll just preface, there was no strategy. It was just... <laughs> <laughs> but um, Strategy is breathing. <laughs> cool. uh, yeah. So after last Sunday, um, I was in the supermarket and I kind of was just thinking, okay, God, you know, give me someone to pray for. And as I went around, he kind of just pointed out to me that, Everybody is the one that Jesus would stop and pray for or talk to. And I was like, oh, okay, nice lesson. That's good. Good to know. And then as I was getting in my car, kind of went, got the, what's happening now, actually? (laughs) Um, And um, I just felt, ask that guy if he's okay in the car next to me. And I went, no, I did my job. Not going to do that. (laughs) Um, And so I got in the car, started the ignition, and then a verse from Sunday popped into my heart, do not quench the Holy Spirit. And I went... (gasps) Ooh, ouch. One, two, three. Ooh. <laughs> nice. So I thought, that's okay. I'm already drive. like I've already got my key in. Um, I'll just ask really quickly and then drive off. And I will have been obedient and it would have been good. Um, so I asked this guy, hey, are you okay? Sorry, that's really weird. And he went, yeah, I'm okay. Are you okay? And I went, yeah, I'm fine. You don't look like you're not okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of laughed. But then I realised that he actually didn't quite look okay. And so I asked again, are you, are you really okay? You know, I'm a stranger. I'm going to drive away. You can talk to me if you need to. Is that literally um, what you said? Basically, yeah. Wow. I was like, you don't have to tell me your name. I'm going to write that down. Um, That's a great strategy. But he, he also said, <laughs> i got to be honest, he said, are you okay? And I went, yeah, I'm really okay. I wasn't going to ask and now I'm really glad I did. So, And then I probably seemed too excited that he didn't seem okay. <laughs> Don't put me on announcements with Chris and Dan. Yeah, okay. I just feel like that wouldn't yeah, go. Yeah, okay. It would go like this. Um, yeah, anyway, so um, kind of got a bit awkward after that and then just sort of tried to ask a few questions to get conversation moving and then a very deeply personal question popped into my head and I thought, oh, okay, this is awkward already. I'll just ask it. And he went, excuse me? And I said it again and his face just changed and he went, how did you know that? And I was like, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know. And he's like, no, really, how did you know? And I said, okay, this is weird, but I'm a Christian and God, uh, God actually told me to ask you if you're okay and then this happened. And he said, this is so crazy. I don't believe in God, but this morning I was just driving and I was like, God, just give me a sign that it'll be okay. <laughs> and <laughs> I think we said the word okay about (laughs) 70,000 more times. Um, So, yeah, that happened and then chatted a bit more about the situation. It's a pretty overwhelming situation this guy has found himself in. And, um, yeah, I just felt to pray for him that he'd have peace in his heart to know the right thing to do. And then he kind of went, okay, well, thank you. And I went, that's my cue to go, cool. Um, (laughs) And just, you know said, well, I'm at C3 Church on Sunday. And he went, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and I was like, Google it. And then I drove away. And wow. that was it. Wow. And laughed all the way home. Went, what the heck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you got to the point where you stepped out into what was obviously an awkward moment because yep. there was something on the inside that stirred. Yeah, yep. You know, so much of actually sharing our faith, which we're going to hear, from, I know, from Gordy and Di very soon, is literally about following the stirrings. It's often in following the stirrings. And, and yes, I know it's an awkward moment. Yes, it is. If it was easy, let's face it, the whole of Devonport would already be saved. But there's something that we have to press through in the sense that the Holy Spirit's already gone ahead of us in most cases. He's already there. He's just waiting for us to catch up. But the way that we catch up is that we follow a prompting, just like Beth did. 
And okay, she might not necessarily have seen him make a decision there or in church yet, but she's planted something. Yeah. Certainly responded to a prayer that that guy had. Yeah. So let's see what happens next. Hey, in fact, why don't we take a moment and let's pray for that person. Yeah, sure. Beth, uh, well, we obviously don't know his name, but we, you've got enough of the circumstance. So Beth, lead us in prayer. Yeah. yeah, one more moment. Let's all stand. Because yeah. again, we're praying for people. We're praying for salvation. It's something that we give honour to here in this place. Lead us away, Beth. Right. God, I just thank you for this young young man and yeah. um, a young man of faith, whether he knows it or not or whether yes. he thinks it or not. Um, yeah, God, I just pray that you will just um, continue to fill his world with people who will step out and um, and let him know that you are listening and that you're yeah. there and, and you're just waiting for him, God. Absolutely. And I just pray that in this situation that he's in, with all the decisions swirling around that he's um, needing to make now, I just pray that you'll just continue to fill him with peace and um, those decisions won't only help in this situation, but they'll yeah. bring him step by step closer to you, God. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for that guy that you're actually watching online today with us, and if that's you, we, again, please stay in line, stay in tune with us. Uh, there's an opportunity at the end where you're going to hear a little bit more about who we are. And uh, again, we've just prayed for you and believing that God's on your case, man. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So uh, again, thank you very much, everybody. If you can take your seats, please. Let's give Beth Overton a huge round of applause. <laughs> so thank you very much. So, Gordy and Dive, I can ask you to begin to make your way up onto the uh, stage with us this morning. So everybody, let me introduce you to two fabulous and amazing people who I have the utmost devotion and respect for. Gordy and Di Kelly. North, I don't know you. No, you're not a Northwest Coaster through and through. No, no. But mo- you've been here long enough, though, for us to call you Tasmanians. Is that right? Yeah. There are microphones there that you can both now pick up and so we can make some noises. Uh, Gordy and Di are leading the local Hope Church. Uh, which now meets on a Saturday night, which is an interesting time frame and space to uh, work from. Just the seventh day, Ben. The- <laughs> you're, oh, sorry. you're right. So it's a, a campus of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. So we started. Don't listen to him. Day. Good on you. Don't yep. put him on announcements. Uh, as you may <laughs> know. <notice. laughs> that would be cool, Chris and Dan. Throw Gordon in as well. Just a guest appearance. <laughs> They're already plotting that, I can That'd tell right now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so uh, again, guys, we want to thank you for your time with us this morning. These two are both um, some of my most natural evangelists that I've met in my time. Um, I've always got my ear to the ground in our local area because, again, as much as that we use the church as a vehicle to win the people to Christ, so much of it is what happens before someone comes to church. Mm-hmm. So much of it is what we do in a community, just like yeah. you heard even in Beth's story. And I know these two guys do this over and over again and so naturally. So they're going to hopefully answer some of the questions that you guys had and um, that you've thank you so much for what you put onto our Facebook page. Thank you for that. So let's give these guys a huge round of applause to welcome this morning. Please be free to take a seat. Give me a moment while I prepare my, uh, here it is, my notes that I've got already pre-prepared. Done. Cool. So church, one of the things that we want to let you know about is that um, before this month of November, I really had a clear sense that God was, uh, for those of you who are guests to us, this building that we're in right now uh, is a lease premise. Uh, We thought we were going to buy it. We did everything to buy it, thought that's where God was leading us. Didn't work out the way that we thought. And so again, in the moment of, of, uh, of that, we then go, well, God, what are you up to? Uh, God's already on our case as far as continuing to direct us in, in a space that we will be here, uh, in a home here in our city. So please don't put too much nervousness about that at this stage. But asking God the question, God, what are you up to? And really felt that God wanted to move us, move us not, uh, not to put so much focus, on because again, there's nothing wrong with this, but at the moment we're very event uh, orientated in how we outreach. And again, nothing wrong with that, but felt God was really bringing us back to the basics that to reach a city is about every person understanding we all have a part to play, each and every one of us. And one of the things I'm so excited about that is there's a real sense of that actually amongst the local churches, that the Devonport church is right now to the point where we've Mm. actually agreed on a combined strategy Mm. that through the the lead up to Christmas or the lead up to December the 20th, that what we're asking for those, as many who are willing and wanting to basically host street barbecues as a way of connecting with your community, yeah. as a way of connecting with your neighbours, your friends, etc. And we'd really want to encourage you, particularly for those of you who are in connect groups, to maybe consider how could you even do that as a connect group? How could you do something, whether it's half of your connect group, two halves, whatever else, so in that role of supporting one another, to put just a small thing on it, in a way to, again... Because let's face it, this Christmas is going to be weird, hey? It's going to be a different Christmas with the whole COVID environment and all that sort of stuff. It's just going to be different. And I believe 
of all things, people again are looking for the core of life, which is relationships. They're looking for authentic, real people. And I can't think of a more awesome group of people who are so authentic in your faith, in your love for one another. I want all our community to meet you. Because you guys, I know each and every one of you who have something to bring. Could you turn to your neighbour right now and just go, yes, he's talking about you. Awesome. So this Christmas, our strategy is going to look a little different. We're not going to be putting out a great big Facebook campaign and different things like that. What we're asking is that even in bringing people to our church service, we're asking that you would personally invite them and direct them to register for our Christmas service. Remembering, obviously, in this COVID environment, we have limited seats. <laughs> and the way Sundays are going at the moment, those seats are filling up. So again, if I can ask you to consider in the lead up to Christmas, who is it that the Holy Spirit has put on your heart? Who is it that he's putting around your world that you could go, do you know what, I think God's directing me to this person. And then pray and obviously invite. But I want to bring now to uh, Gordy and Di, two incredible couples, uh, sorry, an incredible couple, two incredible individuals uh, doing sensational stuff. And I guess, first of all, share with us each a story about how sharing someone in a one-on-one scenario has worked for each of you. Mm. Ladies first. Yeah. Oh, he's, all right. He's, you're so good. I know. <laughs> Just watch me. Um, firstly, in sharing the gospel of Jesus, we automatically go to that place of seeing them cross from death to life. And there is no greater, mm. greater privilege and honour than oh, to absolutely. do that. But most of the time, we don't get to see that part. Sometimes we do and it's awesome. But for all of us, the most important part is doing our part. Whoever's right in front of us, Beth, wherever you are in the crowd, it's doing our part in that moment of either ploughing the ground or planting the seed or watering or whatever it is. And a story that comes to mind where I didn't get to see someone, I didn't get to be part of the harvest, but I was in Sydney in the airport and I'd been to um, a prayer training course for a week or so and I was really full and I'm in the airport and I'd had my first coffee for the week and I'm stroking my coffee and I'm praying (laughs) God bring someone along who I can share you with wow so do you play how often do you do you like literally pray that prayer every day all the time you do Mm. yeah Yeah, yeah. I walk down in the mall and I'm praying that I'm in the supermarket I'm praying that that's just Mm. what I do wow so I'm praying that stroking my coffee (laughs) And this guy jumps out in front of me trying to sell a face cream. And I just said, no, 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 thank you, not interested. Lord, please bring someone along. (laughs) (laughs) And he did it again. And I'm going, no, no, not interested, thank you. I'm a bit slow, okay. (laughs) Anyway, third time lucky. And I went, oh, okay. So he does his spiel. And again, I said, look, I'm not interested. The thing cost a fortune. But I said to him, hey... I don't want what you've got for me, but I've got something for you that's free. And I'd been watching this young guy. He was probably mid-twenties or so, and he had a profound limp. And right in that minute, I just, I said to him, can I pray for you? I just noticed you've got a, you've hurt your leg or something. Can I pray for you? And he went, oh, uh, okay. So I put my, I got permission, put my hand on his knee and I just spoke to that pain and said, you leave him in Jesus' name. And immediately he felt relief and he just had tears in his eyes and he said, I don't know what you just did. And I said, I just prayed to Jesus that he would heal you. How is it? He said, well, most of the pain's gone. And I said, well, it's not all gone. Can I pray again? So I prayed again and this time he had was pain free and he's in tears and he's weeping. And he said, I don't know what to do with this. And I said, why is that? And he said, I'm from Israel. I'm a Jew. And I said, that's awesome. I'm from Australia and I'm a Christian. (laughs) And I said, and that was Jesus that just touched your leg right there. Jesus that you know is a good man, a prophet, is my Messiah. And he's just healed your leg. He healed you from that pain to get your attention. He's pursuing you. Very good. And he's just in tears. And 
And I said, tell me what happened. He said, I was in in an accident as a little boy and his leg was just fully locked. He had no movement. And I said, the pain had gone, but he still had no movement. I said, can I pray again? He said, sure. So I just said, I rebuke that, that trauma from the accident on your leg. Be healed in Jesus' name. And he went like this and he had complete movement. And he's just weeping and he's crying. He's holding me. And, and now they're calling my plane. Like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he said, I don't know what to do. I said, you just pursue Jesus. And I was so torn because I almost didn't yeah. go on the plane. I wow. wanted to see him cross from, from death to life. Come on. But I just had to trust God in that moment and leave it with him knowing that God had him. Yeah, very true. So I just had to be obedient to my part. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Di. That's cool. Wow. Um, I have to tell you just a one, one really quick story before I go into a story. Um, <laughs> and that is, uh, um, as you know, we have the Christian bookshop in Edward Street. Yeah. Please come in. And um, <laughs> is that shameless to do that? No, Sorry. So I, I can't believe I actually didn't are do that. Myself. If you come in this bookshop. week, we will, as a special deal, this week if you come in, we'll add 10% to everything you buy, all right? Just to come in. Um, so, <laughs> but, but very quickly, it's interesting. Di, um, the, the shop, we, we, we bank at um, the ANZ Bank. And um, so Di will often go down to do the banking. And quite often, as you know, in the mall, there are some gentlemen that will stand on the corner just outside there and he, they will just be preaching and full on. Oh, you yeah, can't yeah. engage with them. Nah. They're not, they don't want to talk to you. They just want to spew out, you know, their scriptures and their thing and just um, do their thing. And uh, it's interesting, Diane often talks about such a religious spirit. So she tells me over and over again how many times she's been down there. And as she's walked down there, she's praying, Lord, I come against this religious spirit in wow. these men. And when, when she comes out of the bank, they're gone. Every time. <laughs> Never failed. So one day I go down to the bank. Oh, here we go. True story. And there's... There's one guy out the front yeah, yeah. and I'm like, come on. And I'm like, I come against this religious spirit in Jesus' name. That's not going to come over our city. And I'm in there doing my stuff and I come out and there's two of them. Oh. <laughs> I'm doubling it. Diane's taking it the away. The moral of the story, don't get caught it's in a It's just not good. <laughs> anyway, but I did laugh at that. Um, a couple of things I would say really, really briefly around a story. Um, one that stands out to me... Um, as Diane is saying, every day we sort of ask for intentional opportunities. Wow. Um, but every opportunity is an opportunity. It's not whether, it, whether you think it's intentional or not, you get to preach something to someone or share something with someone, whether it's said or unsaid. That's yeah. the rule, and we all know that. But I can recall doing a, a course with um, Mission Australia. I was looking after uh, doing a 12-week course for um, what they call Stream 4, the most unemployed, the most difficult oh, wow. people to get yeah, back yeah. into work. Yep. Um, and most of these people had addictions and issues that they were struggling with and most of them didn't want a job, quite frankly. And it was my job to work with them for 12 weeks and try and encourage them and motivate them yeah. into work. So needless to say, every one of those guys who turned up to that did not want to be there. They had to be there or their money was cut off. So as you can imagine, it wasn't a great environment to come into week in and week out. But I I recall the very last day after 12 weeks, I had one guy, everyone got out of the room as quick as they could because they were finally finished. They'd they'd done their duty. But one guy got up and he closed the door, which was a no-no because, you know, the safety and all other. And he stood in the doorway and he looked at me and he said, I want to know why you do this. Oh. And I said, I beg your pardon. He said, I want to know why you've turned up every single week when we have given you the hardest time. And he used some pretty colourful language. <laughs> and he said, and yet every week you have turned up and I want to know why you do that. And in those moments where you're not quite sure what to say, but you know, you just there's that little cry of the heart, Father, help me. Because I didn't know whether he had other intentions of hurting me or whatever. Oh Um, the only thing that came out of my mouth was to say, because you matter. And he said, what do you mean I matter? And I said, you've heard me talk about my faith in Jesus because everyone shared their life quite openly. I said, you've heard me talk about what frames my life. And I said, I believe you matter. If you matter to God, you matter to God in such an incredible way that he loves you so much that his son died for you. If I claim to be a follower of that God, how can I not matter? How can you not matter to me just as much? And he, he looked at me and he said, Gordon, that's a great answer. And, um, but he'd shared a lot of his life. And I turned around to this young man and I said, you know what? I'd love to pray for you. 
And he goes, what do you mean? I said, I'd love to pray about four key areas in your life. Because he'd mentioned that he'd been estranged from his family, hadn't seen any, any of his family for quite some time. He was in a relationship, had a young son. He had an AVO out, so he wasn't allowed to see his son. He hadn't held a job down in his whole life, and he was in his mid-30s. Um, he had addictions to, to, um, to drugs and hadn't been able to pass a drug test to, to get a job. And it just went on and on. I said, I want to pray about those four key areas in your life. And uh, he said, I'm happy to do that. So I put my arms around him and I just prayed that God would intervene in every one of those four areas in his life, that he would find work, that he'd be restored to the relationship with his son, that he would find um, relationship with his family and that he would pass a drug test, that this area of addiction would be lessened. And I got out of that room as quickly as I could (laughs) because I didn't know what was coming next. Four or five months later, that young man turned up in our church. Wow. And I look down and there he is. And I go over and I go, what are you doing here? And um, he says, I had to come and tell you what's happened since you prayed for me. And he told me that every area of his life had changed that we'd prayed about specifically that, that afternoon. Wow. So my response to, then, to him then was to say, Nathan, what is God requiring of you now? So if you've seen God's hand clearly in all of these key areas, what do you think God requires of you? And we had the opportunity just to share Christ and to lead him to Christ in that moment. Wow. So that, was a, that to me was one of those moments that was, it came out of a place of fear for me to begin yeah. with yeah. because I didn't know what was going to happen. But God had other ideas and it was just being obedient, um, wow. as, as Beth said before. So, yeah. yeah, fantastic. So that was cool. Awesome. That, that's so good. And again, it's the reason obviously why I've asked you guys here today because you can just... Even hearing mm. you, the the, mm. natu- the nature of this. Um, just before we go any mm. further, I just want to stop and take a moment to let, let's look at the Word of God and again what it says to us mm. and therefore how it relates to what well we perceive here at C3 and how it connects to each mm. and every one of us. Um, we call it the Great Commission from Matthew chapter 28 mm. and verse 18. It's uh, Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples in kind of in their last moments. And he says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority and in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go. Everyone say go. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Come on. We have a deep belief that that commission was not just to those 12 disciples, but to every person mm. who claims a fellowship of Christ. Yep. The beautiful thing about becoming a Christian is that we become born again. Yep. And I believe anyone who's kept themselves as a, what I would refer to as a healthy disciple, um, I would love to say in kingdom we stay healthy, mm. but unfortunately, again, if you've got to stay in community church. You need to stay connected to a local church. One of the reasons I love mm. talking to these guys, they're both pastors of a local mm. church and they direct people into community mm. and into church. Uh, in that moment of born again, a healthy disciple will actually feel the nature of Christ. That's what born again means. You know, a spiritual nature has been birthed. Christ's nature has been birthed. So therefore, if the nature of Christ is to see people come to him, to come to salvation, that their eternity is heaven, Mm. I believe, again, in every healthy disciple, whether we feel confident in in it or not, that every one of us will actually feel, though, the fact that I want my friend to be saved. I want Mm. my family member to come to Christ. And so therefore, again, Mm. it's the reason why we're even doing this today is because I appreciate that even though we might have the desire, we we can be held back by other things. Which is why, again, some of the questions that we want to now direct to these guys. So, so one just, of the, just the on that, can I just oh. say one thing? Just on that, I think I one of the great it. barriers um, that we have to face is that one of the, the, the things that breaks my heart more than anything is when I hear Christians talking about, come to Jesus so you can go to heaven. Yep. I think that's the cream on the, on, the, on the top. But it's come to Jesus and come into relationship with the King of Kings and yeah, the Lord absolutely. of Lords. It's experienced life and life to the full like, you've, like you'll never know it while you're on this earth. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about Walter this morning is that he is enjoying what you and I are still hoping for. Yeah. What we still wait for. He's enjoying. Absolutely. Yes, there's sadness in separation, but boy, there's a glorious joy yeah. to what he's having right now. You know, so I think this idea that come to Jesus so you can go to heaven, um, that doesn't lead to fruitful Christian living. <laughs> which it I know never is a passion has. of yours, which yeah? I guess, therefore, yeah. again, that's why you like mm. to use Matthew 28. Mm. And nothing, I, 
you know, there's two passages in the Bible, yeah. Matthew 16 as well, there's a great commission. But the beautiful thing of Matthew 8 is go and actually make disciples. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just Come on. win to Christ. Yeah. The actual winning to Christ yep. is winning a disciple. Yeah. We're here to make disciples. It's what it, you know, church is one of the vehicles that we use, yeah. small groups, connect groups, building of mm. relationships, which mm. is the ultimate end, which is the yeah. way that we therefore But I really think people. though we we see the difference in those that have relationship with Christ versus those that are waiting to get a reward. <laughs> and I, I'm not convinced at all that we live powerful lives if we're just hanging around waiting to get something at the end of it. Um, enter into the fullness of what God has for you right now. That's what we want. That's yeah. what we need. That's what this city needs. That's what our churches need. Yeah. That's what our families and our marriages and our workplaces and our sporting fields, uh, they all need wide awake people who are yeah. fully engaged in a life devoted to Jesus and falling in love with him more and more each day. Yep. And he's one mm. of the, the balanced things, therefore, though, mm. of being a believer. And one, so for us here as a church at C3, we've, we've walked with, a, I guess, an ideology that we don't want to be busy church. Mm. We don't want to be a church where it's meeting after meeting after meeting. I, I, you know, I've seen some and talked to some where it's nearly like, well, what, what, there's so many meetings that they have in the name of church mm. that you just go, well, when do you actually connect with your community? Yeah. Mm. When do you actually get to have a relationship and there is a balance of connecting with community as much as connecting with church. Mm. It's a double-edged sword because in some ways you can end up spending so much time in the community that you become more like your community yeah. than versus spending enough time with your Christian friends that their influence is strong mm. enough. It's a really fine line to walk. And if it's, a, if it's an area that you're, un, that you're unsure about, I can't encourage you enough. That's an area that you need to ask your connect group leaders about because it's a, it really is a, the getting the balance right um, without maturity and wisdom, I think it's really great to have other people speak into that to help people uh, to help you understand what a balance can look like because it's not the same for everybody. Yeah. It's actually not the same. I mean, again, we go into the evangelist gift. If we want to talk, evangelist is the person who's like it's it's like it's just a natural thing for them to share Christ with somebody. Yeah. Uh, Ephesians two, I think it is that refers to it. Uh, where, but again, there are those of us who who just really need walk with holiness. Yeah. And we need that because there's something about our spirit that just, we, we just need that extra level. So again, if that's an area that you're unsure of, can I please ask, make sure you talk to your connect group leader to get some real wisdom on what it looks like. Oh, I can feel a new series coming into 2021 already. So uh, let me start asking some questions Sorry, that have come yeah. through from our things. So uh, obviously one of the things is, is that holds us back is fear. Mm. The fear of rejection, fear of what will someone think, fear of, of what will someone say about me if, it, if this conversation doesn't go well, so to speak, about sharing my faith. So how have you two overcome that fear? How have you got to a point where that's not something, the fear of rejection, that isn't what holds you back from sharing your faith? Because I'm sure you've had plenty of people in the process still say no, even in moments where you've shared. Yeah, probably more that have yeah. said no than yes. Yeah, um, unfortunately. If you're going to get um, uh, excited about sharing your faith, be prepared for rejection. Yeah, okay. Um, Jesus was, was rejected, so yeah. you know, we're in good company. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I would say quite simply to that, um, you need to understand if you're going to enter into the work of loving and sharing and being that mouthpiece, what are you actually afraid of? Wow. If you don't understand what you're afraid of and you don't deal with that, then it's going to be really difficult to get past that sense of being rejected or ha having the wrong answer or feeling like people are going to say, you know, get lost. I'm not interested yeah, in what yeah. you're trying to sell. And the other thing too is that if you don't get past that f whatever it is that holds you back, then you come across as a salesman not in relationship. Yeah. You know, here, let me tell you about something I need to give you versus, hey, can I journey alongside you and help you see and maybe even hear about the beauty and the wonder and the glory of a relationship with Jesus. Come on. So what are you afraid of? Wow. We must get to the heart of that. Wow. And that's going to be different for all of us. Yeah. Um, for me, without going into the whole, my whole history, I had actually had a spirit of fear in me. Mm. And six years ago, um, I met some people who dealt with that. I know you guys have just been doing your freedom, yeah, freedom series and some, some training in that. I say just get into it, people, because that will truly set people free when you understand yeah. that. And, and this man who knew nothing about me just looked at me in the eye and started to pray and he just said, Spirit of fear, get out in Jesus' name. And out it popped. Wow. And um, that was the beginning of a whole new 
um, walk for me. Up until then, I'd hardly prayed for anybody. I'd hardly shared Jesus with anybody. We had pastored churches. I'd grown up in the church system. So I knew lots of stuff. I'd served on every roster that there was to serve on. (laughs) I did everything, but I didn't share Jesus because it hadn't kind of gone from here to here. Well, no, no, that's not true. It had, but fear had crippled me. I suffered with anxiety. Well, can I ask, what changed in your thinking? Because I reckon you'd have noticed all of a sudden I think differently. Can you identify that? The spirit was blinding me. Wow. I actually could not, I did not recognise that I had fear in me. I wanted to talk to people about Jesus but couldn't. It was like I was just, I was blind, I was mute. Wow. And... um. I would, I would hang on the back of Gordy. Gordy is the evangelist. He just has words that just come. I wow. sit there and go and scratch my head and say, oh, in the Bible it says something about something. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Whereas Gordy can sit there and quote, quote the things and can defend his faith. Well, I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't. I, it, it was like it was stuck. And it was interesting that um, Dan, for the communion... Um, time he shared the verse from Corinthians where Paul says my message is not about um now I've forgotten it see here I go (laughs) um the words it's not about the words it's about a powerful display of the Holy Spirit wow and so the difference with us now in our the way we operate is I can't sit there and say oh xyz has to happen for you to find Jesus I just whoever's in front of me I just ask the Holy Spirit to to show me what they need and I'll just step into that place but but again if it comes back to that issue of fear which is often the root cause for a lot of us not going to that place can I just say um, the more you fall in love with Jesus let his love for you and your love for the others conquer your fears so your love for Christ has to become greater than your fear of being rejected by someone else that's exactly right so So. let's follow on because you've talked Mm. in the midst of this you've also talked about and I'll stay with you first Di and then come to you Gordy Um, but you identify the fact of again being worried about having the right thing to say so again because that's been a comment that we've received from a multitude of people in regards to the the uh, Facebook comment that was up. Um, mm. So how, did, how have you both dealt with that? How have you dealt with the fact that, but what if I say the wrong thing? Or what if I don't know all the answers? What if I don't get, get it right? Mm. Mm. Well, I know I won't have all the answers. <laughs> but when Jesus touches someone, how can they debate that? Come on. Absolutely. And they can't. Yep. Ruby could not debate the fact that he had no pain in his leg anymore. Absolutely. And then it was something that was locked for 20 years now, yeah. had complete movement. He was hungry at that moment. He's open. God. Come touch him. Wow. Yeah. So that rejection, um, I guess for me, about six years ago, I, again, yep. same time frame, I listened to a message by Bill Johnson and he talked about um, how for him no one is more important than the one in front of him. Yeah. So I just thought I'm going to adopt that. I'm going to take that as my own. Yeah. And so that's my prayer. No matter what's going on, the mm. person in front of me is the most important. Mm. And... Um, and I will be, try to be like Jesus to them in those moments and stop looking at me and stop worrying about being rejected and seen as a lunatic or whatever. This person needs a touch from Jesus right now and I'm the one in the spot. So yeah. here I am, God, use me, whatever, whatever that means. Cool. So it's, you've got to push through. Mm. It, don't, let, don't give in to fear. Don't come into agreement with fear. Mm. So good, this man. one needs Jesus. Let me share. Yeah. Uh, I'll oh, never forget a comment by a um, friend of mine, Pastor Fergus McIntyre, who used to say, uh, on the other side of your obedience to those kind of moments, on the other side of your obedience, in other words, moving past fear, mm. is someone else's freedom. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. And when you can move through that moment where you can feel the prompting of the Spirit and mm. follow that and therefore overcome the fear that wants to be there. Yeah. So mm. when you follow the obedience, on the other side of that is the beauty of someone mm. else's yeah. freedom. Mm. It's so Incredible. Good. Yeah. Mm. Gordy, how about um, you? I heard an evangelist say this 35 years ago. He said that people are far more ready to hear the gospel than we are to herald it. <laughs> I don't think that's ever been more true than it is today. Yeah, wow. Um, and if we start with a position of what if I get the wrong thing, what if I say the wrong thing, what if I don't um, have the right answers to share, I would say that's the easiest hurdle to get over. Yes to all of those things, you're going to do them. Okay, so we're all going to mess up, make mistakes, give wrong answers, get stumped on questions. So that's your, that's your starting point. 
but it shouldn't be um, the reason why you stutter to move into a place of movement with someone around Christ. I think the beauty is that what people are asking from you is not perfection. They're asking from you to share your story and to be real with them. Absolutely. And, and so when we talk about evangelism, it's never, ever been a program, although there have been some awesome programs developed. Yeah. It's always been a relationship. And sometimes it's a relationship in distance because let me walk with you in some other way. It might be a regular phone call. It could be um, through, you know, your electronic devices and the whole thing, yep. through FaceTube or something like that, as someone <laughs> said. Um, but, what, <laughs> but whatever you do, just understand that it's always in relationship. Wow. And the relationship can be just the guy that fills my car up every week when I, when I get fuel or the person I grab my takeaways from or whatever. Um, but I begin to form something with that person that is ongoing and consistent. So for me, one of the things that, that I will do is I'll often go back to the same places yeah. because I want to see a consistent face and I also want to speak into their lives. I think who we have and who we carry is worthy of being able to be shared. And so therefore, I don't want just randoms all the time. I want to be able to speak into people that I'm forming relationship even from across a counter. Wow. So that's, that's um, yeah. So Incredible. get over the fact that you're going to make mistakes because it's going to happen. And the good thing is, and I said this to you the other night, the good thing is when people ask you a question that stumps you, they don't know the answer either. <laughs> so good, we're even, you know what I mean? <laughs> but the great news is that you have the opportunity in that moment to say, great question, Sharon. I have no idea. I know I probably should. I know, you know, most pastors probably do know that. I have no idea. But can I ask a question? Can we journey together towards the answer to that? Wow. Let's do that together. That's such a great question. You know? A great, not so, just question, yeah. but statement and, yeah. and even offer to make with someone. Absolutely. Because it shows the genuineness. Mm. It shows the authenticity. Yeah. Um, you know, never be afraid of being mm. vulnerable. Mm. Uh, I think of all things that... Um, that we win so much rapport with here in our region, uh, and particularly amongst us as Australians, is when we're willing to be vulnerable. Come on. When we're willing to say, oh, I'm not perfect. When we're mm. willing to say, I don't have all the answers. Uh, I know I certainly don't have all yeah. the answers for yeah. some of this stuff. It's just faith mm. is faith. There are Absolutely. mysteries of this faith yeah. Yeah. that will never be able to be answered. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so just coming to terms with that. Yeah. But I can't encourage you enough. The greatest gift I think you can give to a person when mm. you're, in this, when you're in giving, being given this moment it is literally just be you. Mm. Don't try and put on some Christian facade. Don't try and put on some suddenly theological sounding answers. Just Can't do it be yeah. you. Yep. I love the point uh, uh, Gordy made earlier on about um, the, the person in front of you matters. Mm. You know, we have a statement here that um, Jesus is enough. Mm. Yeah. Your value is the equivalent of that of the Son of God. Mm. 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 If Christ would die for you, that's your yeah. value. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, every yeah. person, yeah. doesn't matter whether they've become a believer yet or mm. not, mm. every person that we meet, mm. their value actually is mm. that of Christ himself. And, yeah. mm. and yeah. may we treat them with the utmost yeah, respect. May we yeah. speak about each yeah. other yeah. Yeah. with the utmost respect. Mm. May we treat each other mm. regardless of what someone might mm. do to us. Mm. May we walk as did Christ with forgiveness, with love. Yeah. And grace, mm. which is the most incredible things. Yeah. Brian, I, sorry, just one last thing. I just because you know I've got it. Um, <laughs> I, I heard I heard a speaker this week that I was listening to. Uh, um, Di and I often just go, oh, I'll listen to this sermon. You've got to watch that. You've got to do this, you know. And um, in this sermon this, this week that I was listening to, the speaker made this comment. He said, "Unbelief hides in poor theology." So think that through. Unbelief, its best hiding place is in poor theology. And poor theology happens when we try and explain something that we don't get ourselves. <laughs> and it's, it's the worst thing that we can do. Absolutely. Frame That's your theology you know, around know. Christ, for sure, what you know and what you see. But poor theology yep. creates unbelief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to encourage you, encourage you so much that when someone says, Here's a thing, and you don't know it. Don't try and explain it away. Don't do God a disservice by trying to speak into something that you don't know anything about <laughs> um, because it'll only make it worse. But that's why the journey of discovery together creates great theology and creates solid, mature believers in Christ. Come on. That's so what we good. want. Fantastic. So, so I guess, uh, again, just because of time and all those sort of things, if I was, uh, what's the... What haven't you said? What's one thing, if you were to just go, mm. like, this is the one other thing that I haven't talked about yet that I would really want people to know to help empower them, equip them, bring confidence to them yeah. and sharing their faith with others, what would it be? 
Yeah, that's easy. Just fall in love with Jesus more and more. Come on. Because you can't share someone who you don't know. So just pursue intimacy with him because then it will just, whatever you do, whatever you say, whatever you share will just come from a place of overflow. Mm. It won't be a striving. It won't be a, oh, my goodness, here's someone. What am I going to say? And then you just, in a fleshly moment, step into that. Mm. It will just be a fullness of the Holy Spirit that just pours out. So Mm. just pursue Jesus. He's there and he wants you to love him. He wants to have that close, intimate relationship with you. And you can have it. I didn't think it was possible, but you can. You can have it. Come on. So good, thank you. Yeah. Um, I would say two things really quickly. Um, (laughs) I'm sorry. Sorry, everyone. Um, I remember one day sitting in a mall and I was watching a lady feeding her child uh, from a jar of stuff, and she was shoving this stuff in this kid, uh, (laughs) and it was coming out of every orifice. I'm not joking. And not only that, but as she's shoving food into this poor kid's mouth, the kid's going. And pushing it back out. He'd had enough. <laughs> he didn't need any more. And I oh, sat and there and ooh, I thought, ooh, I how often we do that yeah. with people in our community. You know, there are many of us that unfortunately, if you look and review our lives as Christians, mm-hmm. most of us do not have intentional relationship with non-Christian people, yeah. with pre-Christians as we'd often call them. <laughs> There's a guy here this morning, Ken, I won't embarrass him by mentioning his name, <laughs> <Too late>. um, <laughs> who, who does that probably better than anyone else in the city. The, the, the people he loves and sits with and cares for um, because he has a, a desire to share but to live mm. um, out his faith um, in a powerful way. Often we get to this point where we don't know uh, uh, non-Christian people. So we surround ourselves in this holy huddle and then we somehow venture to the perimeter, throw our gospel grenade over the fence and we run back to the safety of the sanctuary and we say we've done our job. Woo-hoo. No, we haven't done anything, you know what I mean? So we've got to change that. You need yeah. to be intentional about building relationship with Absolutely. people outside the kingdom. Um, at our little church, we say there are two key relationships. Are you walking alongside intentionally with one other Christian mm-hmm that you can build into their lives and help them mature to look more like Jesus? And are you intentionally walking alongside someone outside the kingdom to love and to journey with them and to show them the love and the person of Christ intentionally? Are you doing those two things? Most people have the second, the first but not the second, which is a tragedy, I think. So that's one thing I'd say. Secondly, Paul says in Acts um, Acts 20, he makes this comment where he says, I don't care what you do to me, I'm going to paraphrase, but I don't care what you do to me. You can beat me, throw me in jail, stone me to death. I don't care what you do, but don't you dare take away the right to preach the gospel of Christ. Come on. That's what he says. It's, his, it's almost like I've, I've written it up as his life statement because I think that's it. You could do anything you wanted to the Apostle Paul, but don't you dare take away the opportunity for him to share Jesus' life and love with people that were desperately in need of that. So I would say this as a closing thing for me. If there's one piece of advice I'd encourage you is that people can't go past a wide awake, born again, spirit-filled Christian. You just simply can't not notice people like that. <laughs> and, and one of the things that I would encourage you is if when you do get the opportunity, often we want to choke people with as much as we can shove in there as we possibly can because we may never get the opportunity again. Celebrate that you may have turned a sod of soil that you might have planted a seed, that you might have watered and rejoice just as much when someone else gets the chance to see them over the line. But every one of those steps should be equally as important and equally celebrated. I think we lift up the evangelists, but we forget about the people that are doing these things every single day in the most profound and beautiful ways. So I would say to you, here's one key. Here's one thing that I would encourage you. Know your testimony. Know your story because you know, people can say the Bible's not true, that Jesus isn't who he claimed to be. They can tell you that you know it's all wrong. What they can't dispute is that you've had a life-changing, life-transforming um, experience of meeting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So and so I would encourage you to do one of two things. I would encourage you to have your testimony down in the shortest possible time that you can. And I often say three minutes is all you need to share your testimony. One minute it needs to be, let me tell you my attitude towards Jesus, towards God before I knew him. Let me tell you how I came to know him, how I was introduced to the King of Kings. Let me tell you now the difference that life with Jesus has made. There's three minutes, one minute on each. That's all you need, nothing else. 
And if you can refine that, you'll have something, a, a weapon in your arsenal that will be so powerful when it comes to just in the moment being able to capitalise and take that opportunity to share life and Absolutely. love and truth. But it comes from a place of your experience, not a story you've heard, but it's actually let me tell you what I know to be true and nothing, nothing will change that for me. That's what I'd encourage you to do. Wow. How's that sound? So good. Can we please give Gordy and Di a huge round of applause to thank them so much for coming in today. Uh, Victoria, have we got the slide up there of the quotes from last week? It's like right at the end of the notes. Have we got that available? I just want to finish with just a couple of, to reiterate a couple of things that again, um, unfortunately we so often tell a story in our head that no one would want to listen to this. People will you know that, that this isn't where people are at. Um, you know, we looked at some research by a gentleman by the name of Mark McCrindle. If you guys could just stay there and I'll bring you, reintroduce you back in a moment. He did some research. Uh, Mark McCrindle is a Christian researcher, you know, surveyed uh, over, um, over a thousand people and then, gen- and then again used all that research data to put it into um, some results to help us understand where is the nation at when it comes to um, knowing about Christ. And he discovered that more than half of Australians are open to some extent to changing their religious views given the right circumstances or evidence. And going down the third paragraph, it's conversations with people are the biggest prompt for Australians to think about spiritual or religious things. It's conversations. It's us connecting with somebody and then simply finding a way to share our faith. Somehow let's undo the story that says, but what if they say no? And start to tell ourselves a story, but what if they say, but what if they say, yes? Come on. <laughs> I know so many families who I know didn't need Christ. I've watched so many families be transformed who have received Christ. And I want all of the Devonport and beyond to have what we have. How about you? So what I'm going to ask you to do right now, just in this moment, I don't want to, I don't want to race this but obviously you're aware of time. Can everyone just please close your eyes right across this building? Can I have the keyboard just for a moment? I could not not give this opportunity after talking so clearly about Jesus Christ who gave his life for your stuff, for whatever shame, for whatever stuff it is that is in your life that may have made you feel horrible about yourself, that it may have made you feel distant from being able to be even accepted amongst a group of people. I've seen people so bound up by... Um, sin and shame that they literally have in their head I'm not worthy to have anything good come to happen to me and if that's you I want to let you know that today that is the lie of the devil and that the work of Christ is the fact that you are in this place right now to hear the best news in the world Jesus Christ loves you if you've not yet given your life to this Jesus Christ if today you'd like to become a Christian just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Or well, maybe you've been a Christian, but you, you walked away, stuff happened. I get it. I've journeyed with so many people over my tens of years of following Christ, and I've watched people get distracted by hurts and stuff. But it's not God's desire for you to walk away. His whole work has been to how can I connect you to love, joy, peace patience, kindness. If that's you if, you, if you know today you need to come back to Him again in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Or maybe today you're unsure if you were to go to heaven or hell. My experience matched with the Word of God tells me that when I have given my life to Christ, there is a seal of His Spirit that connects over my spirit to assure me that I know, that I know, that I know that I'm going to heaven. And if you don't have that, I want you to have that. If you're unsure. So today, if you've not yet given your life to Christ, or today if you know you need to come back, or if today you just want to be sure that you know, would you just please raise your hand in the air indicating, yes, that's me. You'll hear me say the words, thank you, and you can put it back down again. I'm going to ask you to do nothing else than that. So if that's you today and you know you need to give your life to Christ, to come back to Him, or to just get that assurance that you know that you know you're not sure, could you just please raise your hand in this room? indicate for me yes that's me today I want I want to give my life to Christ or I'm coming back to him or today I just want to know for sure awesome thank you everybody awesome
gosh, and I thought that would be the case today. But I wanted to make sure, just for sake of even clarity, of what our message is. Our message is simply, Jesus loves. <laughs> Help me preach for a moment to your neighbour and say, Jesus loves. Your neighbour on the other side and say, Jesus forgives. And your neighbour somewhere else and just says, Jesus is so welcoming in. All right, can we please all stand? And I'm going to ask Gordy and Di if they could just join me here on this stage just for a moment. And I'd really love for them to pray for each and every one of us. That they would pray over us as a church that in our mission to follow the work of the Spirit, I gave Beth's story before because I wanted us to understand that if God is going to reveal strategy to us, if He's going to redirect our strategy to the sense that, again, He wants to equip each and every one of us to win people to Christ, well, then let's be assured that the Holy Spirit, therefore, is then with us to do it. So, Gordy and Di, would you please, let's pray for us. Pray for us, pray for us as a church. Let's just, you might want to raise your hands, close your eyes, whatever it is, but let's put yourself in a place right now. You say, yes, God, I want what they have. Yeah, Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you are so real. Thank you, God. That you're not just words in a book. You're not just a historical document, but you're alive and you're well. Come on. And that you want to fill each person here with your spirit. So Holy Spirit, I just ask that you just come now in a whole new way and that you just come and fill each person with your presence, with a power and a passion to point people to Jesus, which ultimately points people to God the Father. I come against every spirit of fear in this place right now and I bind you in the name of Jesus. I speak to every spirit of unbelief that sits in this place and I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. Come Holy Spirit, come, come, come. Open each person's eyes to see you. And I pray, Lord, a blessing, the blessing of a dissatisfaction over each person here that they will not be satisfied with what they've lived to this point, that they will get an urgency, they'll get a, get a, a glimpse of of eternity, a glimpse of how fickle this life is, how sh- actually how short this is, that this life is not about us and our comfort and our world right now. It's about eternity. God, give each person an urgency in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, Father, I thank you that, um, that the gospel isn't a hard message to know it's come to Jesus and die it's a simple message but it's a hard message to live out Father because it means we surrender everything everything to you Father I pray moving forward that as as your community as your family as your witnesses yes God that we would be bold enough to speak into each other's lives when we don't see death, the death of self, the death of this world, and that we're not, if we're not raised in the newness of life, Father, will you give us the courage to speak into one another's lives where there is no fruit, where there is no image of Christ being, being shown? Will you give us the courage to speak into one another's lives, to raise each other up to a standard Mm. that Father just breathes and just heralds Christ in the most awesome way in our community. Father, will you help us die to self more and more and more? Will you give us the courage, Father, to cry out to you? Would you help us to die to ourselves in our marriages, in our workplaces? in our communities, in our neighbourhoods, and in this church. And Father, will you help us to recognise that many of us have raised our hand, we've signed a card, we went forward at a meeting, we prayed a prayer. But for many of us, Father, there's just not a reflection of you, and that's not good enough. That's never acceptable. And so, Father, will you give us the courage to move into those relationships, even with one another, where we refuse to let that be okay? 
and what is shaped and what is honed and what is crafted through relationship that cares, through love that changes, through an opportunity to serve and to journey with someone else that is what is formed and what is honed and what is brought through is beautiful for you, is marvellous for your kingdom. And every part of it looks and sounds and acts like Jesus. And so, Father, we give ourselves to you in that respect right now. And we ask for the fullness of all that you've created us for to come to fruition. And nothing less than that, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. see what you see about ourselves that indeed that you love us that our value is indeed that the very son of God mm. so much would you treasure us mm. and Lord that in the places that we're in whether it's at work whether it's down a street whether it's at school whether it's across a fence of our neighbours God help us to see where you are moving and for us to have the courage to respond that boldness may indeed come upon us, your church, your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I know this might seem a little strange, but let's give the Lord a praise offering. Say, God, we're in. God, we are in agreement. We are with you. We thank you. We thank you indeed. And can we give a huge round of applause, Pastors Gordon and I? Thank you very much, guys, for being with us today. It's been thank you very much. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Announcements. Good morning, everyone. It's Chris and Dan on Announcements. That's right. Or if you prefer, it's Dan, Dan and Chris. And Chris. Yes. yes. Now, this is a, this is actually the fifth take of the announcements. Let's let's not just not yeah. Let's be serious here. It. So, uh, we've been given the three C's of C three announcements. So this morning we are going to make it clear, concise, concise and, and quick. quick. So. First up, we've got three birthdays to celebrate, and I can't read the writing because it's too right, small. Got we've got Megan, Megan Smith, Smith, Glenn Norman, and Zane Harmon. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! So, happy birthday to those three people. Absolutely. Uh, give you, them a round of applause. If you've got them on social media, send them a message, be like, hey, happy birthday. Or if you're young and hip, just be like, HB. HB. Yeah, because I'm, I'm young and hip. I know. Yeah. That's one of That'd the be cool. I know about you, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Now, if we missed your birthdays or your anniversary, then please go up to the service desk and Just let them know. We're and really also, sorry. you'll find some feedback forms about Dan and I with our announcement star. Uh, but so. only, only positive feedback. Yes, yeah, 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 10 star birthday. reviews only. So. Excellent. And if yep. you're watching online uh, and we've missed your birthdays, again, we're sorry. You can head to our website and uh, get connected. Yeah. And give us your details so we get them next week. Awesome. No, not next week, next year. You can't have a birthday two weeks in a row. Yeah. That'd be, you'd get old real quick. Yeah. Hey, remember that quick bit? Yeah. Yeah, we're getting the look again. So. Sorry, All right. So what have we got on tonight? All right. So tonight, youth is on. It's going to be so good. Oh, actually, look, I do have to just stop you there. Mate. So just real quick, right? I've noticed over the last couple of weeks, right, when you're doing the talking or when that person's doing the talking, they put up this big thing of words over us. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm like blocked out. Yeah. So I've got an idea. So, all right. One, two, three. All right. So now you do the talking. I'll talk. I'll pretend that I'm doing the talking. You're I'll gonna... do the mouthing. Yeah. Wait, so they're going to cover me up? Yeah. Okay, cool. Tonight at Youth, it's going to be so good to be here at the church, 6.30 to 8 o'clock. If you're in grade 6 through to grade 12, it's going to be so good. So make sure you get here. Yes. It'll be fantastic. So That's grade right. 6 to grade 12. Lots of fun. And it's going to be fantastic. So come along. What we could try next, we could just do one word each and just really mess with the word. Nah, it's all right. I think so, that'll take too long, Chris. I think that'll take that'll too long. Take too We've got to be quick. quick okay, quick, quick. so last announcement is this week. It's this our week. gingerbread night 
Which is happening... Friday night. It's happening Friday night, everybody. So if you have not yet registered, there is still time. You can register for our gingerbread night. Uh, jump on the Facebook page. You can find all the details there, how to register. We've only got chocolate kits Only available. chocolate kits left available. Uh, which is... $35 a kit. And that's fine because chocolate is good. Chocolate's the best. So... That's it. That's it. I, I think we're finally done and after 10 takes. So, we've been quick, yeah. we've been concise and... Yeah. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a fun three days, but uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. See how we go next time. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. See, See you yes. next year. Three. Thank you so much for joining us online at C3 Church Devonport today. We hope and pray that your experience with us has been a very memorable one Come and on. a great one. So um, if you want to find out more about who we are as C3, honey, how can they do that? I'm glad you've asked. Hey, we'd love it if you would join, on, jump onto our website, www.c3churchdevonport.com. Here you'll be able to find a link to what go towards our online page, which is somewhere you could, if, particularly if you're new to us, uh, we'd love to hear from you, love to know that you're watching and be able to connect with you. Or maybe today you've made a decision for Christ. Again, we would love it if you would connect with us, that again, go to our website. Uh, you'll see a, a, quite an obvious link uh, about connect, you've made a decision to follow Christ. Love it again if you would just fill out that form, connect with us, and we'll, we'll yeah. get in touch with you within the next 24 to 48 hours. So good. So thank you for joining with us again here online. If you yeah. live here near in the Devonport area, we would love to host you. We would love yes. for you to come and come experience who we are place. at C3. Yes. Um, but again, if you've got any other questions about who we are, please feel free to jump onto our um, Facebook site yep. and send us a message and inbox us and we'll uh, yeah, start a conversation through you. that. Yeah, so good. Have a fantastic week. God bless. Bye.